morning everybody welcome back to time metalhead weatherman here hopefully everyone's doing well it's been a long stretch covering barrel here she had quite a surprise for us as she uh went in the land she may have very well dropped up to about 30 maybe even more than 30 tornadoes total which is kind of rare for a tropical system to drop as many and also they were pretty strong if i were to say so myself but after that long stretch, we're finally done with that, so we're back to our regularly scheduled programming. So, asking that you guys hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, as we get ready to cover this next stretch of weather here, because there's still plenty of it to talk about. So, we're going to start out with our severe weather stretch over the next few days. A lot of slight risk in play. Most of these are going to be damaging wind threats. During this time of year, that's usually the more common thing. Usually when you look for a tornado threat, as I've said before in other videos, you want those dew points and those temperatures to be pretty close together, especially at the surface. Don't really have that going on right now. With the dew points really ever get into the 90s, it's pretty scary if that ever ends up happening. It probably happens somewhere, but it doesn't happen here often. But in any case, though, I have an interesting setup for today where we have a... 15% chance of damaging winds over here towards Tucson and while I want to say that this is good news for the area in a way because they've been needing rainfall let's not let's not get too excited here because while there's a chance of thunderstorms we also have a chance of what's called dry microburst this is a setup that promotes outflow winds from thunderstorms and pretty strong ones at that and this is more likely to cause a boobs where we get um where we get a thunderstorm to form over there's still a chance that you could get some rainfall but i think the rainfall totals are going to be relatively light unfortunately because when i first saw this i was actually kind of excited for this area too we have a couple viewers over here but be on the lookout today for a potential haboob or sandstorm so that's the main threat for today over towards the region. We do have a threat for hail over here also towards Western High Plains. Not expecting too much to come of that though. So I wouldn't be too, too concerned with that. But if you get an isolated shower, thunderstorm, be on the watch for potential for some hail. As we go towards the following day, not a super impressive setup as a whole over here towards the Western High Plains. Again, also getting some of the Northern Plains into the mix here. The Dakotas are now in play. Pretty much a similar deal Rent, wind hail main threats tornado threat really low and i would even go as far as to say that the same could be possible for this setup i would not be quite as surprised if a two percent threat pops up with this but based off what i've been seeing off models i'm not too concerned about this i'm really more interested in the damaging wind threat with this and really that threat will remain over the course of the next couple of days here so we head towards day five and day four and day five here so as we go forward into the models here keep an eye on the euro for the uh, bottom left corner here what we'll make note of here is the upper level setup for today's severe weather threat you can actually see the ridge right here pretty clearly and this is what's going to help keep the moisture down and that's why these thunderstorms are more expected to produce dry microburst winds could be pretty strong with those too by the way they, they have they're known for being pretty strong whenever you get the dry microburst in particular but i do see a setup where we could get a, enough lift generated to where we can get these kinds of uh storms to develop later in the afternoon for this region here it always is kind of a throw for me considering the fact that it's mountain time so like early afternoon i think these storms could develop and then I think our microburst threat will probably manifest just a little bit after that. Don't expect it to be a long duration threat. These storms may have an interesting uh, component here based on movement from the, from the ridge here. We could actually see a southwesterly motion possibly. Can't tell for sure just looking at this level. But also the... Uh, the winds at the lower levels aren't strong, so I'm definitely I'm kind of leaning towards this look here. We'll have to see how things develop from that point, though. And then, of course, with that ridge on the, back, on the uh, north side of it here, where we still have some rising air, we have a chance for some storms to develop over here. Right now, looking at the uh, 
upper to mid levels the setup is still not that impressive so this isn't really i'm not really expecting this to translate into the lower levels that's why i'm not going to show the maps in this one but as we go further along here we do see a little bit more style of a setup as we head into saturday timing i think might be a little bit of an issue and a limiting factor in regards to that severe threat and then sunday this is where things get a little bit more interesting here where we can kind of see a little something here but also think that our lift mechanism may not be that strong so timing is going to be a little bit of a question here in regards to the setup i do think it'll be sufficient enough to where we can get a line of storms to fire it's just more or less when and where does it develop and how long and uh, how does it progress from that point those are the key questions that i have at that point so we go towards monday the setup becomes a little bit more stout and then that kind of piques my interest even more as we get into monday afternoon and this is over towards the chicago area once again over towards parts of eastern iowa here southern parts of wisconsin as well and then from that point we do have predictability low tags for days six seven and eight like i said there's i do see some model agreement here uh model disagreement here in regards to how this setup looks but model data is of course also limited once we get towards this range because we start to really get on the far end of the range here for most of these models outside of the GFS and Euro. So we continue to go on here. You see this trough here. And then eventually as that moves out, it's going to actually make for a little bit more of a stable weather pattern down the line here. I mean, we could have to keep an eye out for a couple of features that try to sneak in from uh, southern Canada down into the US and maybe that might prompt a chance or two of severe weather but I really think those threats are going to be marginal as we go further along as we get towards the back half of the month especially closing in towards the end it does look like our pattern starts to pick back up once again here so do have to keep an eye on things later on down the line and in the short term but I think towards the middle part and into the first stretch of the back half of the month we're actually going to be uh, pretty nice in regards to precipitation. The heat, however, a little different, unfortunately. Now, getting into the moisture side of things, looking at our severe weather parameters today, we do have a decent amount of moisture, but it doesn't last. As you can see, we're in the low 50s with our dew points here. Some areas even in the 40s. And this is, of course, towards our point of interest for today. So with that, just like I said, I really think I'm favoring that dry uh, microburst look and maybe even a boob threat to exist over here. So we go towards Friday. We start to see a little bit better of a moisture return. Nothing incredible, though. Again, pretty similar numbers to what we were seeing over here towards the southwest today. We can expect tomorrow. Now, we may get into the lower 50s. We may have more bountiful lower 50s, but even then... I think that's going to keep the threat limited to maybe a hail threat at best. Maybe a little sneaky damaging wind threat is possible there too. As we get into Saturday, we start to get much more ample moisture. We're getting into the 60s at that point. Maybe a couple of 70s even sneaking in from the crops. And then from that point, moisture content goes up as we get towards the Mississippi River, anywhere east of the Mississippi River, you're still going to be dealing with plentiful moisture unless you're up towards the mountains around the Virginias here. You could have a drier pocket there. And then, of course, as we continue to go further along, it's really no surprise here. The moisture content, if you're east of the Mississippi and towards the Mason-Dixon line, it's going to be plentiful for the most part unless you're up towards the upper elevations here. And then as we continue to go forward, that trend's just going to hold here. Nothing's really, like I said, nothing's really uh, stopped the Gulf of Mexico moisture at any point towards the southeast. So unfortunately, along with the heat, we're going to be dealing with plenty of humidity, plenty of dew points. So going to be kind of uh, saturated outside, so to speak. Now, another thing that I'm going to be taking a close look at here, and I don't know why we jumped that far forward, is going to be our instability. And this is another reason why I still think there's a chance for thunderstorms over towards the southwest today is because we, while it's not an incredible amount of instability, we're at about 500 joules per kilometer. It's about the minimum that you would require for thunderstorms. And with enough of that, enough of that uh, upper level shear, that deep layer shear, I do think that we could get something to spark off over there. As we head into Friday here, I think this is a big, 
this is the leading factor in why we might have a severe weather threat along with that mid-level feature is the amount of instability that's available. The same can be said as we get into Saturday as well. That instability only increases as we get into Sunday here and also Monday. Surface cape is actually really impressive over here. So this is all another reason why I lean towards that damaging wind threat. It's because usually during this time of year, when you have, whenever you have uh, explosive cape values like this, a lot of storms form in the same place at the same time and usually can geel together. You don't have the environment that you would need for those discrete supercells that we would all think of when it comes to tornadoes. Although the tornado threat is not, I wouldn't say the tornado threat is zero on Sunday or Monday at this point. So here's that instability again. So we go into Monday and it even hangs around as we get into Tuesday and Wednesday. And that's why the predictability is still too low because we still have just enough instability in play to keep these, uh, to uh, feed these storms into maybe even becoming strong. Then after that point, as you can see, the instability takes a notable drop off here. We may have a couple of chances of some stronger Florida storms here as well. So we go forward, if we can get enough of a, of a uh, lifting mechanism over here, it's not impossible. That onshore breeze can help aid that as well. And then from beyond that point, as we start to get towards the end of the month where the weather pattern gets more active, of course, we may have to watch the uh, Midwest, maybe even the deep south once more. Still the wild card of tropical weather to come into play as well, which we'll be talking about tomorrow. So as we move on to our temperatures here. And this is where the bad news kind of comes in in the short term. Still going to be hot. Still going to be dealing with widespread 90 degree temperatures up towards the southeast into the plains. And of course, do I even need to really say anything about the southwest here? As we go beyond that point, we may even see some triple digits sneak in here over towards the southeast. Plains already still dealing with that. Not a surprise there. And then we even start to see those 80s and 90s sneaking their way into the northeast at this point. Now, keep in mind that as we continue to go forward here, that Gulf of Mexico moisture, any sort of lifting mechanism, it's always a chance for those pop-up pop thunderstorms or popcorn thunderstorms as we call them down here. You can see the you can see that highlighted by these little uh, dots right here, which are these little breaks in between the 90 and 100 degree temperatures here. Those are from storms that will help cool down the air for at least a brief period of time. But as we know, sometimes that can be to our benefit or our detriment in the deep south here. So we all know as we keep moving forward here, heat wave is not going anywhere, unfortunately. Now, as we get towards the middle part of the month, we do see a slight cool down. As that ridge really starts to ramp up out towards the west, the east looks like we catch a little bit of a break. We're still dealing with about average temperatures, so it's not going to feel incredibly different. It's not going to feel out of season, but it's definitely going to feel a lot better than it has, which we kind of need considering the fact that those dew points still aren't going to be going anywhere. So. Def me personally, especially since I'll be back at work soon, I'm definitely happy to see that. Of course, as we get towards the back half of the month, the pattern becomes more unstable. And with that, we'll be, we may see an increase in our temperatures out towards the east as well. The west is still going to be hot at this point, though. So I'll go ahead and wrap this video up real quick, and we'll go ahead and take a look at what our precipitation maps are looking like right now. Of course, as I mentioned before, emphasis today is really going to be more so over towards the southwest here's some of those showers and storms trying to develop threat for again threat for haboobs dust storms coming into play this afternoon maybe even into the evening do have this little pressure feature here which is going to help increase the chances of showers and storms this actually had a 10 percent chance of developing into a tropical system i wasn't really expecting much of it just wasn't enough time for this to mature at all but this is going to help increase that uh, popcorn shower and storm threat as we go forward here. Like I said, we needed that little lifting mechanism in order to get things going. And there it was. Also, as we continue to go forward here, we're watching our severe weather threat. Saturday, you can see this little complex of storms try to fire here. And the threat becomes a little bit more organized as we head into Monday. I'm not really rating Sunday as high of a threat as what's being shown right now. I do think that there's going to be some changes with that. 
So we go into Monday here. Even GFS isn't quite picking up on that thread as well, which is kind of surprising. But we still see a good bit of activity as we had in Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. And we see a lot of shower and storm activity, a nice little mass exodus of rain over here towards the Midwest and over towards the Deep South, Southern Plains in particular as well, which is good for them. We'll keep a little bit of moisture in the mix. It's been pretty dry over towards a couple of these regions here. Get a nice little low pressure to develop on Thursday. Get some increased shower and storm activity towards the southeast beyond that point. And then this is the part where we start to see a little bit more fair weather coming into play, or so we think. We still have a couple chances of showers and storms here and there. And over towards the southern plains, we still have a good bit of activity available. Although the severe weather threat, the organized severe weather threat, does drop off at this point. But we do get plenty of shower and storm activity towards the Midwest. We get towards the back half of the month here. We even see Florida getting into the mix once again. And then after that point, we do have to watch towards the Northern Plains once more as we get towards the end of the month for maybe some more organized shower storm activity, maybe even a couple severe weather threats. But a lot of changes coming, so make sure you're staying tuned, staying on guard here in regards to the weather. Really, the heat's going to be the main topic. Of course, we have our chances of severe weather here and there, but definitely be on the lookout if you're over towards Arizona today, especially over towards towards Tucson and maybe even Phoenix and Flagstaff. But that being said, I hope you guys are taking care and staying cool. I will see you next time. It's Tyre Metalhead Weatherman. You take care and have an awesome rest of your day.